concerning the very um, necessary hot button topic, if you will, and a top, but a, to a, a topic nevertheless that we must be real about and honest about, and let's even be even more honest about it. A lot of us have no clue what people are talking about when we talk about this subject, right? All you know is you pretty much, primarily, people have two sides of this topic when we get into it. Either they believe in it or they don't, but they can't really express anything um, concerning it from the Bible's perspective, from um, from scientific perspective, from agnostic perspective, from atheist perspective, because they have no clue what it is, right? Um, and real quickly, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in Yahweh's sight. He is our strength and our redeemer, and it is in his name, which is his authority, that we pray, praise, proclaim, project, and protect this message. Amen. <clears throat> um, amen. Um, so we're going to talk about what is evolution. What is evolution? And all this stuff that we hear people talking about, what exactly is Evolution. So many people have so many different things, and we, we're quick to talk about this. Those who do the early rise of Bible study with us, um, you know, on six at uh, six forty-five a.m. Eastern New York time, um, or really six thirty, if you want to come and hang out with us and 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 chill and have some conversation. Um, you know, we we have this conversation. And we have these different things that we talk about. We have these different things that we um, are getting into, but people once again just have no clue. Right, So people don't have a clue as to what is being discussed. And since people do not have a clue as to what is being discussed, we have a very limited conversation. And when we get into things that people would call things like evangelism, or people would get into, well, you know, real questions people should have. If you believe in this, then why, is, why, why does this happen scientifically? Or why does this happen scientifically? Um, we have a big problem when it comes to that. So... I'm not sure if this will be something that we continue to go down and, and look at, you know, for a little while, if this is something that we'll just deal with on this rising and kind of leave it alone after that, you know, but it is something that we should take time out to be honest about, because if we just once again, keep it real, most of us can't explain anything about evolution other than I believe in it or I do not. And give me a second, because my voice <laughs> is a little terrible right now. I am pretty tired a little worn out and been having to yell and cry out about certain things and different things like that. So I'm going to try to be treating, I'm trying to treat my voice as we go. So you guys forgive me. You know, let's, let's have an honest conversation about evolution, right? Let's, let's, let's do that this rising. Let's have an honest conversation about evolution, right? And uh, before we get started, you know, please, may, uh, we were, once again, we give all honor to the Most High, Yahweh Elohim. Uh, please feel free to follow my wife, the Honorable Maya, who lives a life that's able to be honored. You can follow her at Bloom and Flourish, not A-N-D, but the letter N, Bloom and Flourish on TikTok, YouTube, and her website. Uh, we're thankful and grateful uh, for each and every one of you, listening, family, community, friends, people who agree, disagree, enemies, <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, we're thankful and grateful to each and every one of you. Uh, for taking time out to listen in, and we love to have these platforms that we have uh, to be able to make sure that we have these discussions to go a little deeper into this subject matter and to be able to bring things out that possibly we've never thought of, entertained, had somebody show us, etc. Um, so we're grateful and thankful for another opportunity to be before you again, and um, hopefully you get something out of this that might bless you, that might cause you to think differently, that might cause you to show love, um, to people in a different manner than what you did and might cause you to have empathy for somebody else's belief system. So uh, shalom to everybody, Minister Nice, I see you, Sister Deborah, I see you, um, um, Angelic Discipline, I see you, Sister Barbara, I see you, thanks for being on. Um, we see you, see you, Derek, I think you were the first one on, at least on the podcast, Sister Sonia, uh, Brother Steven, Betty Smile, Brother Thomas, Chef, how you doing? Um, Grand Rats and everybody. If I miss your name, I apologize. Uh, I think I saw Erica come on, Sister Helen, I believe I saw Austria on. Um, I always forget who I, um, I saw 100 Yard Alchemist. I can't remember the name exactly. Thank you for being on. We appreciate everyone. Um, and um, we look forward to, um, I think, Brother Stephen, I just saw you come on again. So thank you all for being on on multiple platforms. And um, remember, uh, so we you should be 
sometime today. You should be starting to get links for tomorrow for our brothers in black, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern and New York time. And you should be getting links, uh, a link for um, October 31st. We'll probably just use the same one. So it'll be the brothers in black event. And it also the brothers in black link will also double as our um, link. If you want to use Zoom for Hallow's Eve, if you don't want to just use TikTok or, um, you know, YouTube or well, I guess YouTube won't be live, but you know what I'm saying, other platforms. So, let's get into this. Evolution. Evolution. I've got some notes for us today. I wanted to make sure because it's something that we have to be careful about because some one of the things that people do with evolution or anything that's considered to be scientific, although it's as much pseudoscience as they say that what we believe is or what we speak on things are, but if we're going to be honest about evolution, one thing we have to do is Make sure that we get certain terms down and make sure that we teach you um, things through their lens, through their word usage, because that's one thing that they'll happen to use. Um, a quote by Mark Twain um, that he uses that's very effective is, uh, never argue with fools um, and, because when you do, they will pull you down or drag you down to their level and then they will beat you with their experience. That is an amazing quote. Right. In other words, and I didn't quote it exactly right, but that's pretty close to it. And and that's an amazing quote. Basically, that means that if you end up arguing with a fool, right, and to be against Yah is foolish, right? Just straight up. However, some people don't like you to say that, right? But let's just be honest. To be against the creator of all is a losing proposition. And if you're going to argue with somebody who's decided to argue a losing proposition, basically, they're going to... they. If you're going to, you're going to come. You're going to have to come down to their level of thinking, and when what often happens is when it said, when Mark Twain says they will beat you with their experience, what he what he's saying is they would use things that they have experienced through their limited prism lens, etc. Right, and and being what the Bible calls willfully ignorant, right? It is their will to be ignorant of the Most High, so that they can be about their will and not His. So you will deal with somebody who is willfully ignorant. And therefore, they're going to beat you from the experience of things that they've come up with rather than what the Bible comes up with, right? So, um, you know, that's a that's an amazing, awesome quote. And a lot of people, you know, kind of run past. Maybe you've heard it, maybe you haven't, but it kind of reminds us of what we're dealing with. Shalom, Brother Jermaine. And so what I want to um, speak on, this rising, you said it's a lot of time, wasted time to argue with such people, right? But, you know, if you're going to do any type of evangelism, Maybe we wouldn't call it argument, but you will have some, or arguing, but you will have some arguments that will present themselves. And so one of them that's going to be a huge thing, or that's going to at least be the background, or is going to be the um, the gateway to their argument, right? That's going to be the foundation of their argument, whether they know it or not, is that people argue from a place of evolution. People argue from a place of evolution, Right. Um, and so before we get into this, I'm going to give you six types of evolution because the only one we really truly focus on, and I'll be honest, you know, I, I'm not a hundred, well, no, I can't say I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of this. You know, I, I tend to focus on one type of evolution more than others, but I do speak on other types of evolution. Um, but you must comprehend, depending on who you're talking to, you're talking about a different type of evolution. Matter of fact, a lot of people who believe in evolutionists, maybe, or evolution, maybe we would call them evolutionists, Shalom Erdogan, um, a lot of them who believe in evolution don't even recognize that there are several types of evolution. So if there are six types of evolution, first and foremost, we've got to figure out which type of evolution you're arguing. Right? That just makes sense. <laughs> Correct? Right? So, so if we're going to talk about evolution, first of all, what type of evolution are you arguing about? Do you even know that you need to know which type of evolution? Because if you're going to be apologetically sound, right, if you're going to be somebody who debates others, if you've ever been on the debate team, one of the first things you need to do is understand what you're debating, what side you're debating from. What is the other side going to present? Can you, be, can you defeat your own um, debate with the side of, the, of your opponent, right? These are things that you do, in, uh, right? When we do apologetics class, I've had people, are, I've asked people, what do you believe? What is your standard? This and that or whatever. And then I flip it on them. I say, okay, now I want you to come up with an argument for next class where you're going to argue something that you don't even believe. Right? But why do I do that? Because you need to be able to be in the mind of the person that you're committed to having a conversation with 
that you're committed to love, even if they don't love themselves or love you. And, and you have to be in the mind of this person because this person, you have an opportunity to help them to be able to get to a position that you're in. You know, you used to be in the world too. And now it's time to allow them to help escape their situation, their plight, etc. Shalom, Sister Shante. So, let's talk about evolution. And let's talk about the fact that there are six types of evolution. Right? So, first type of evolution is cosmic evolution. If you're taking notes, I'm going to make sure that I slow this part down just a little. Make sure that you can write it down. Right? There's, first and foremost, there is cosmic revolution. What type? Cosmic, not with a K. K-O-S-M-I-C would be um, talking about a system that evolves, right? No, cosmic evolution with a C, C-O-S-M-I-C, is talking about physical. So it's talking about a universe, right? That word in and of itself already messes up the argument. Um, but we'll talk about them in a little bit, right? But cosmic is the first one, and cosmic is talking about the evolution of the universe itself. How is it that the universe evolved? Okay, that's number one. Number one is cosmic. How did the universe evolve? Number two, the second one is chemical evolution. Because you have to believe if everything's made out of chemicals, you have to therefore believe, right, that if everything's made out of chemicals, then that means what? That if everything came out of chemicals, then that means that, or I'm sorry, well, all of us have chemicals or, or chemically made up, so to speak, right? And even when we talk about chemical drugs, we're talking about somebody where somebody shifts and messes with the chemicals, right? So, so if there's chemical evolution, then that means that that's evolution of higher elements. If you have a periodic table, there's certain... Um, elements that are higher than others that were supposed to have come first. So you have to have stuff like um, hydrogen, right? You have to have stuff like helium. You have to have stuff like oxygen, nitrogen, right? You have to have higher elements. So in order for other elements to have come into place with, you know, not just artificial elements because those are man-made, but you had other elements that are considered to be lower elements. First, you had to have higher elements. Without the higher elements, they say that there can be no lower elements. And so these higher elements not only had to evolve into lower elements, but they had to what? These higher elements had to first evolve from something, right? We're going to have issues with this stuff. If you already see where we're going, just off of the explanation, the definition, we have some issues. We have some questions that probably pop up, right? So that's the second one is you have to have chemical evolution. The first one, cosmic evolution. The second one, chemical evolution. All right, what's third? Third is now you have to have stellar and planetary evolution, which means that it's not just how the universe evolved, but now we got to talk about specifically how did planets evolve? Why is it that Earth is the only one that we can find that has life? And we keep saying, well, maybe life was on Mars. Maybe there's some signs that life was somewhere else. Maybe Pluto, which was a planet, oh, no, it was a dwarf planet. No, oh, no, maybe it's a planet. No, oh, no, it's really not even, you know. But maybe Pluto could have had enough water or ice or something for something to live on it. Maybe we found a 10th or an 11th planet that's far away. Up, oh, no, that's not really a planet. But before that, you know, we, we said that maybe life was on it. But out of all these things, why is it that Earth is the only planet? It seems to have life on it. Now, those of you who were with us on Monday for our early rise of Bible study, you already can kind of figure out where we're going to go with that. You know, but at the end of the day, if there's life, you know, nowhere else, but there's life here, then we got a weird thing. We got to talk about how planets evolve, yet somehow, some way, we have to also figure out, well, if all these planets evolve kind of sort of the same way, then why is it that the Earth has life and nothing else has life? I mean, we're trying to say there's signs of life, you know, we're trying to say that there's had to be something because there had to be something that formed here in order to form Earth, but we can't find anything else, right? Shalom to those that are joining. Thank you for being on. Um, so, so we have cosmic, chemical, stellar, and planetary. The next one, the fourth one, is organic evolution. Shalom to Shimon. The fourth one that we have now is organic evolution. That simply is, how did life begin? How did life begin? When you say, I'm eating something organic, you're saying, I'm eating something that is alive. 
If it is not organic, it is not alive, or it is basically a test tube, baby. Forgive me for using the, such a crass term, but it's basically plant life or something that is put that is made in a test tube, that is that is made falsely, if you will, that is not made, that is seedless, that somebody made or altered the DNA of, and it cannot even really give life the way it's supposed to, and it keeps messing people up, and it comes with side effects, right? But if you're talking about just life in general, natural life, under natural law, right, then, then there has to be organic evolution. In other words, there was nothing, there was nothing that was breathing or living, and rather than the most high breathing life into something, right, and creating it, we have to figure out how rocks turned into human beings. And I'm not exaggerating that. I'm literally telling you, if you read textbooks that you grew up with, you have to figure out how a rock somehow gave birth to uh, primordial e ooze or whatever. I mean, these elements that evolved, right? And these elements got together and eventually down the road led from, from soup that was with rocks to human beings. This is this is evolution. This is a type of evolution. There's six types of evolution that we have to discuss. We only focus on a couple different ones. But if we're going to speak on evolution, let's just be honest. Let's be honest using even what the evolutionists would tell us with their theories, right? You got to explain to us, and we have to be able to deal with six different types of evolution. You might not have known that there are, are such, but this is what you're dealing with when you're talking to a lot of different people. And out of this culture of evolution, this belief system of evolution, now you get to places to where you have people that are emotionally invested in certain things, that are, you're dealing with these types of feelings and moods and energy, right? And, and people building habits off of this all the time, right? Something that is constantly changing, because guess what? When they get something wrong, what do they do? They say, oh, we got it wrong. What do we say? Yeah, well, the, our concepts are evolving, no, your concepts are not evolving. Your sept is not evolving, even if you understand the difference between the two, right? A lot of them don't even understand that. Your sept is not evolving. What's happening is with your idea, your sept, your sept was wrong. Your theory was wrong. Your theory was not proven. Your theory has now been disproven, and now you're trying to say that now you evolve. No, 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 you're not evolving your thought process. You were dead wrong, <laughs> right? Right. So but so that's organic evolution. The fifth one that comes up now, we got to deal with something called macro evolution. This is, is called what? Macro evolution. Macro evolution is how does a species go from one species to the next? That's that's the main one that everybody's familiar with because everybody likes Dar Darwin or to talk about Darwin or to use Darwin. Right. But but that's the main one that people know about is macro evolution. Right. A lot of us are aware of macro evolution because we're we are, are aware of Darwin. Right. So if you're going to talk about evolution from either side of the spectrum, understand that there's so far five types that we've gone over. Number one is cosmic. Number two is chemical. Number three is stellar and planetary. Number four is organic. Number five is macro. And the last one, if you guessed it, probably is micro. Right. And micro just simply means variations, right? The micro, when they say micro um, evolution, they're talking about variations, slight variations that happen. Now, quick question for us before we go any deeper, right? Especially for those of us that are on the line. But if you're listening to this on YouTube or you listen to this recording later on the podcast, here's a quick question for you real quick. Out of all six, here, here it is now. Out of all six that we just went over, we just gave out how many? Six types of evolution. Out of all six types of evolution, question for you. Which one is the only one you think has been proven? And it's not a trick question. The answer is not zero. Question for those that are watching, especially live, or listening live. Question for you. Out of all six, I'm going to read them again for you, but out of six, there's only one that can be proven. I'm going to ask you, so if, if somebody, so you got to get into terms, even though we wouldn't call it evolution, if you were talking to somebody who's an, an evolutionist, then try to find some common ground with them. So try to tell them, well, I believe in one of them, but try to guess which one it is. You have cosmic, you have chemical, you have stellar and planetary, you have organic, you have um, macro, which is, and you have micro. Which one do you think? 
Cosmic means universe, chemical, higher elements, stellar and planetary, you know, basically the planets, solar system type stuff, um, organic life, um, dealing with just natural life, macro dealing with species, micro dealing with slight variations. Which one do you think? Okay, somebody said organic. No wrong answers, right? Somebody said chemical. I see somebody got a correct answer on there. I'm going to hold it up to a couple people. Only one. Only one, yep. Yeah. Somebody said cosmic and chemical. Nope, there's only one. Only one that can be proven. Somebody got it right, though. I haven't mentioned you yet. I haven't mentioned a couple of you yet that got it right. All right. The only one that can be proven that there was any type of evolution for is micro, the last one. Micro dealing with variations. Because all micro means is that two animals, two human beings, two plants, whatever it is, come together, have sex, and have a baby, and the baby has a slight variation from them. Right? So somebody might say, you look just like your daddy, but you don't really look just like your daddy, right? You look very similar to the point to where we can tell you're your daddy's child, but you don't look just like your daddy, right? You have variation, right? Or what if you're a woman and you're born from a, from, from, from a male, right? Even if you got almost the same exact face on you, you, you're going to have a couple variations, right? Like if you're a woman and he's a male, right? If you're a female, he's a male, then obviously he, he's going to have a phallus and you shall not. Obviously you're going to have breasts, right? And he shall not. You're going to have a different type frame. You're going to have a womb and he doesn't, right? That's micro. So that's not even really evolution. That's why I was telling you. It's not even really evolution, right? I think it was Barbara, Sister Barbara and Angelic Discipline that said uh, micro, at least from what I saw, um, right? But that's not really what we would consider evolution. We would just consider that childbirth. We would consider that generation to generation to generation. But in their culture, they have to change the definition. So number six, they call it, which is micro, they say that, oh, it's just variations, right? But that's how, that's, and, and by the way, so we should have no problem. With that, so if you're talking to somebody, you know, it's, it's to, to kind of give the context of what I'm talking about, how to have this conversation. Um, if you're speaking, if I'm speaking to somebody who's a Buddhist and they say, I believe in reincarnation, I say, I believe in reincarnation too. I've talked about this on the lives before and people will be like, wait a minute, hold on, you believe in reincarnation? Even the Buddhist is floored. Like I've gone to Buddhist temples and they'll be like, wait a minute, you believe in <laughs> reincarnation? I wasn't expecting that. What do, you, what do you mean you believe in reincarnation? How can you be a Christian and believe in reincarnation? I'd be like, well, you know, first off, not a Christian, but I get what you mean, right? <laughs> and secondly, I believe in 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 something incarnate. And if it's incarnate again, and then incarnate again, then it would be reincarnated. So I believe that Yeshua was in the form of Elohim and found it not robbery to be one of us. Came down, right? And was incarnate in the womb. Came out of the womb. It was uh, reincarnated as a, as, as from being inside the womb to being out. Now, some people would say, that's me going too far. Okay, fine. Well, how about this? After that, it says that he died and he went down in the hill, right? So he was re reincarnated down in the hill for us. That he came back up, reincarnated, and it says that they didn't even recognize who he was. He didn't have the same body. He had a glorified body, right? Then he went back up into heaven. He was able to go into heaven now. I would believe that he can use the same incarnate body to go up, but there's a possibility, right, because we don't know for sure, that his body could have been reincarnated on the way up. However, we do know he's coming back, and when he's coming back, he's coming back again in another body, reincarnate again. Now, I would just, so, so I can have a conversation with them now that is actually deeper and actually allows them to put their guard down because we put the whole reincarnation thing to the side. We might disagree on what reincarnation means as far as how many times you can come back and if you turn into a bug, if you turn into a plant, if you turn into a seed, if you turn into a woman, if you turn into a man, if you turn into a cell. We can, we can have that conversation later on, right? However, we can at least have a conversation where I'm not judging you for a word and therefore we can't even have conversation. And so the same way in evolution... You can find common ground where it's fine. You want to call it evolution? Well, we at least agree on this, microevolution. I agree with you that I can take a wolf just like you did, right? We can take a wolf and then we can have that wolf breed a few times and it becomes something else. And we can keep having those things breed and eventually we have all these breeds of dogs, 
right? They basically all came from wolves. Maybe some of them from wild dogs, but it seems like wild dogs were never really bred. Possibly they were bred a little bit in Kemet, right? Um, you know, but we don't really know. Uh, possibly they were bred by other people in, in Africa. We don't really know. But for the most part, all the dogs that we know about across the planet basically came from wolves, whether they were wolves in Europe, whether they were wolves in uh, North America, right? Whether they were wolves in Asia, whatever, or hold on, there. Yeah, there's a little bit of, little tiny bit of Asiatic wolves, right? Um, you know, wherever it was, but we know all these dogs that exist now, they basically have one common ancestor. They came from a wolf. So just like we know that that happened, just like we know that all these, most of these cows that people are using, meat cows and milk cows and this type of cow and that type of cow and all these different things, they basically had a common ancestor, right? We can understand that. We can understand that if animals have sex long enough, if human beings have sex long enough, there will be variations. There will be people that will be light-skinned and dark skin and straight hair and, reg and regular hair and all these different things, right? Matter of fact, if you get even into um, different things that are deficiencies, the way that people eat and certain things that are passed on generation to generation to generation, that certain sicknesses and illnesses can also divide things and have variations, right? So if anything comes into being, if somebody says, talks about evolution, it's like, well, first and foremost, hey, we can have a conversation about this that's not us having to beat each other up because number one, we both agree that there's micro evolution. If you want to go there, if you have to, if you must call it evolution, fine. We agree in microevolution because we believe that two things can come together, have children long enough, and even though they will not stray too far away from the original copy, they will still at the same time be their own, which is why two people will never have the same DNA exactly, they will never have the same fingerprints exactly, but they will microevolve if that's the term you want to use. Okay, we'll give you that one, right? We'll give you that one because that's the only one that we can prove scientifically. The only one that we can prove scientifically is micro evolution. That's it. So if they want you to get in the conversation with, hey, cool, just comprehend. The only one that we really are able to prove is micro evolution. Right? The only thing that we're really able to prove is micro evolution. We're not able to prove these other ones. Right? If you want to have an honest conversation, you're the scientist. Or you're the one that says scientists are, are smarter than I am. You're the one that says that believing in, in, in Elohim or believing in a God or believing in a nature or believing um, in whatever Hindu uh, beliefs, whatever Confucianist type beliefs, whatever type of Buddhist belief, you're the one that says that those things are terrible or wrong, right? Right? Even though you're a deist technically because then you'd be the same person to say I'm the God of my reality, right? But okay, we'll leave that alone. You say that I'm foolish. And you're righteous. You say that I have this thing that you call religion, but you don't have religion, right? So I have faith in something, but you're saying you don't have faith, you have science. All right, even, but only one thing is there according to your science that you can prove because you have to be able to experiment and prove these things. Everything else you have are theories and theories are not fact. Theories are what you use to get you from point A to C. You can't figure out B, but you know A existed at the beginning. You know C existed. We're here now. So... In order to deal with your D through Z, your future, you say, okay, let me figure out what B is. Here's a theory I'll throw out. And you have this theory of evolution. Okay. Not a fact of evolution. They teach it in school. They force you to have, they force your children to have to believe the earth is hundreds of thousands of years old and all that. But they have nothing to back up any of it. You were told all these numbers. They don't know if the earth is 6,000 years old. They don't know if the earth is hundreds of thousands of years old. They don't know if the earth is 1 million years old. They don't know if it's 100 billion years old. They have no clue. They're just throwing out numbers and things based off of somebody's theory. There's nothing that can prove even when they say, oh, well, there's a machine and we can put this in a machine. When you put it in your machine and you put something in there, first of all, you have to change the composition of it. If you change what something is, it means that you can't even dictate how long it is according to your own science. So if you have a bone and you say, I'm going to crush a little bit of the bone and put it in the machine to see how old the bone is. Well, time out. According to your own science, as soon as you crush the bone, you can't tell how old it is anymore anyways. You tampered with it. Right. Like there's a bunch of stuff that's there that we just don't think about because we're we're not gauging in that. We don't really believe in it. But once again, you're going to run into people who that's their thing. Or you might run into something in your own study that will be confusing to you. They will say, hey, well, I know we say we don't believe in evolution, but what about this or what about that? Well, understand, first of all, there's six types of evolution. So figure out what type of evolution you're even delving into. What type of conversation do you need to be ready for? Is somebody sitting there talking about evolution that's micro well look at look at the look at the wolf and how it's evolved into the dog you would say well i believe in micro evolution they say 
Well, how can you believe in microevolution, but you say you don't believe in evolution? First of all, what's microevolution? Well, you know, that's just one of many types of evolution. I really don't believe in evolution, but I know what microevolution means. It means that animals just keep having sex. So if they keep having sex, right, if a species keeps having sex, here's the problem with evolution, too, when it comes to microevolution. Um, people keep saying, well, yeah, microevolution, this and that, or yeah, two children, two, two people can have sex, and blah, blah. Here's the problem with microevolution, though. Microevolution doesn't prove evolution right because you got to prove all six of these really to prove evolution but microevolution doesn't prove evolution because you can't have two different species have a child so microevolution just simply is nothing more than Yah's plan that he made all these um, things after their kind after their species and when these species have sex they have babies right now if you have a donkey and a horse come together they can't have a child but that child is what is not really organic why is that child not organic? Because that child cannot give life. So that mule will never be able to breed. Never. You can have a liger. You can have a male lion and a female tiger come together and have a child. But that liger can never have a child. Right? Or you can have a tie-in. A tie-in is a male tiger and a female lion that come together. And they have a child. But they can never breed again. There's a lot of different things. They have half zebras and half donkeys out there. Zonkeys, <laughs> right? I know these are weird terms, right? They, but they actually have these things. They People have fooled around with nature and stuff, but they cannot get the next generation that they fooled around with to give babies because they are inorganic. They look like they're alive, but they have no seed. The second that you have no seed in you, hmm, the second that you have no seed in you, the second that you can't, hold seed so to speak i'm not talking about your eggs are gone i'm talking about the second that you are not actually something designed to carry a seed at all not that you might have issues with carrying a seed i'm talking about you were not designed to carry a seed when these animals come into being they are not designed even by men even by men trying to design a new species these species cannot hold seed you see that yeah, mule is born sterile, right? And he said, uh, blessed are those who have faith in the unseen because the bounty they receive goes past tangible. Amen. Um, Salah, no seed, right? You said, my uncle used to own animals like that. They were not right in the head. Yeah, there's something wrong with them, right? They can't function correctly because that's not what they were supposed to be in the first place, right? Matter of fact, if you know about the Willie Lynch letter and stuff like that, you will recognize that Willie Lynch said that when we breed white people and black people together and then we start interbreeding them with each other and interbreeding all these people he even said that we will get a stubborn and forgive me for for saying a curse word even though i'm not really saying a curse word because the bible uses this word but for those of you who will be thrown off that a pastor would say such a word please forgive me but he says we will have nothing more than a stubborn backwards ass mule So he said we were trying to break, he said even when in micro evolution, for them, he said we're trying to breed people that are stubborn, backwards, and that are ignorant, and that are not right in the head. I'm going off the definitions we just talked about today, <laughs> right? So this is a micro evolution type thing. That's the only one. I'm spending time on that because, hey, that's the only one that we can kind of give some credence to, but we still got issues with it because it can't prove evolution because it doesn't prove you can't have They've tried, by the way. They've tried to have um, chimps and human beings breed. I'm not talking about just because on some nasty stuff. I'm talking about, well, it's all nasty. But I'm talk not talking about just because of some lust stuff. I'm talking about they tried to bring the sperm and the egg or sometimes even have the stuff have sex with each other, I guess. I'm not going to go deep into that because that's disgusting. But they've tried to do that. You can't do it. You can't do it. Right? All right. Next. So let's go back to the first one. First one is cosmic. Right, and um, I don't have as long as I normally have, so I'm going to get ready to take my leave in a little bit, a little bit um, shorter than what we've been doing the last few days. Um, however, I do want to make sure that we go over this. Right, so next one we have is cosmic evolution. That's the universe. Number one, how can the universe evolve? If you're using the term universe, we're going to go way deeper into this. Um, for those who'll be on with us for our early rising session on Monday, how can a universe evolve? If a universe is spoken. Salah, right? How can a universe evolve 
How can a universe evolve if a universe is spoken? This isn't, by the way, me going into some deep biblical um, topic or profound stuff, or some people might even try to make this some type of weird, um, you know, mumbo jumbo type thing. No, no, no. I'm literally telling you what the word universe means. You know the word universe. Uni, one, verse, a spoken sentence. So universe literally means one spoken sentence. How do you evolve a spoken sentence? Just question. <laughs> right? How do you evolve a spoken sentence? What is the spoken... Now, the question has to be, therefore, if we still use this term universe, because everybody, no matter what religiosity they had, no matter what place they came from, they believed there was a universe. The question then is, which spoken sentence do you believe? I just so happen to believe, in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. You don't even have a spoken sentence. You have a, a, a weird theory. You call it Big Bang Theory. Is that a sentence or is that a is that a noun? Is it a, right? I mean, what is that? It's not even a spoken sentence, but my concept of universe is actually more clear than yours is. I, I believe in what the word itself says. I'm not even talking about the word of Yah. I'm talking about what the word universe means. It means one spoken sentence. Well, if one spoken sentence cause is what we live in, then I live in Barashit, bara Elohim at Shemayim at Aretz. Where in the beginning Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Right? But that wouldn't be enough for some people. That should be a lot. But that wouldn't be enough for some people. So we have to go a little deep into it. It's like, okay, well, if you believe in the Big Bang Theory, number one, you believe that everything came out of a bang. So, and you also believe that space existed before and everything blew up space um was a, a vacuum all this stuff is exploding so number one if everything exploded in space and is continuing to move then everything's just going to continue to move in the direction it's exploded in it's not going to slow down it's not going to come together everything's just going to keep on moving nothing's going to have a speed fast enough to catch up with the other one because all of it exploded from the same place it's moving at the same rate the universe can't come together but what if somebody spoke the universe into existence and the same person that spoke it could cause anything that was spreading out? In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth, and the earth without form and void. It was a gas. Darkness was upon the face of the deep, though he caught it. He slowed it down and began to liquefy, right? And when his mindset, or part of himself, Ruach HaKadosh, when she hovered upon the face of the water, moved upon the face of the water, all right? And then all of a sudden the water began to be separated. Then all of a sudden out of nowhere, he slowed it down even more and said, you know what, let's find a way to slow this down. And we see it now today. We call it volcanoes that are under the water that cause islands and different things. And all we're living on is basically a big old island that's coming out of the waters, right? What if, what if science simply agrees with what I say? Because you use a word, as scientists, you call it the universe, but then keep talking about the only one or the only type of being that could have spoken into existence is somebody that doesn't exist. Well, then stop using the word universe. Tell us, tell me something else. Don't call it a universe anymore. You got to find something else because you're speaking my language. When you speak universe, my ears perk up because I'm like, yeah, I believe in one sentence that was spoken. <laughs> I believe that wholeheartedly. I believe that one sentence was spoken. Right? You tell me there's a big bang, but there's, but if, if a big bang, everything exploded, everything should be exploding in the same direction. Let's say somehow, some way through a vacuum, things can slow down and come together. Well, how is it that you have planets that spin one way clockwise with other planets, that spin as pla planets and moons that spin counterclockwise? That means that they didn't have the same explosion. Like something's not making sense, right? So that's cosmic. Evolution. We got some big problems with cosmic evolution, don't we? The second one, chemical evolution. So this says that there's higher chemicals that have to go through lower chemicals. And they say the same chemicals, which is always interesting to me when we say this, the same chemicals that are in the stars or inside of you, as if anybody's ever been to the stars. Right? I've even taught on that before. I ask, I've repented of that. I ask for forgiveness for anybody who heard me talking about that. Because when you think about it, it doesn't make sense. First of all, when's the last time somebody's been to the stars? When's the last time somebody got close enough to the sun or any of the stars that you like, any of the constellations that you like, to actually get evidence from it and bring it back? You said, I believe in, in let there be. Amen. Right? So you've never seen 
any evidence. You've never been given any evidence that what's in you is in the stars, number one. Number two, even if you believe that there are elements in the stars, here's a big problem. Because the stars are what they're saying have to have given the elements. So the problem is, number one, well, how do you make the stars without elements? It's the chicken and the egg conversation, right? So the question becomes, how do you make the stars without the elements? And how do you make the elements without the stars? Because you're saying the stars made the elements, but the stars have elements. So how do the stars have elements? Are you saying the stars made themselves? But then how did the stars come into be? Because you had to have elements to form the stars, According to what your science says, not according to what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying according to what you believe, not what you teach. I'm talking about what you preach, what you proclaim, what you believe, because you have to have faith in this. As we're seeing, there's holes, right? You keep saying, well, you can't tell me how the Most High created all things and who created the Most High. You're right. I, I don't know how that works. I don't believe he was created. I don't even know how to tell you fully how that works. You have to have faith in your thing. Now, tell me how you believe. Right, that a star made elements, but the element is uh, made the stars. Who made who first? Or could it be possible that somebody created them? See, you believe because somebody, because the Roman Catholic Church, which is wild in and of itself, you believe because the Roman Catholic Church switched service to Sunday and then told you that the star came first and then the earth had to come around the star. You're trying to figure that out. Meanwhile, the Bible tells you that the earth was made first and that everything else was made around it. So how can you study the universe to figure out the earth when you haven't even studied the earth? How is it that you keep telling people, which is nonsensical because you say that you don't even, you know, but you say you know more about space and you know about underwater, which is ridiculous. Like you, if space is supposed to stretch according to your science for eternity, right? Then how in the world do you know more about space than you do about what's on the earth and why are you focusing more on something that came second than you are something that came first we have some issues that pop up i hear your angelic discipline that's a great way of looking at it next i gotta speed through this next part because I, I must take my leave earlier than what i've been taking it um in in recent times past stellar and planetary now we got to figure out like i said earlier how is it that the earth evolved planetary well how did the earth come into being and how is it that the earth doesn't get, because what they tell us is that this, the earth rotates around the sun while spinning around, while going close to the sun, but then away from the sun, because it doesn't get too close, because too close we would die. But it says that the earth goes back and forth, right? But then they, real, then they said, oh, well, wait a minute. No, 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 the earth doesn't go back and forth. It's actually wobbly. It's on, it, it not only spins, but it wobbles. And we just don't feel any of it because the gravity of earth is so strong that we wouldn't feel, you know, millions is it hundreds of millions tens of millions of, of of miles per hour the earth is spinning and going back and forth like this and going around the sun at the same time and having the moon that's supposed to be having such gravitational pull that it's pulling the waters up and bringing the waters back down and all that right it's we're, we're supposed to be experiencing all that but we can't feel it okay all right like i'll give up on that maybe that's just the child in me that's still trying to say like that doesn't make sense to the teacher and not allowed to and i might get sent to the principal's office you know so maybe i'll maybe i'll exclude that one maybe i'll be like okay that that one maybe it's it's beyond me it doesn't exist i can't grab i can't get it okay question though how did things evolve to where once again we already talked about the sun which is a star that had to evolve chemical evolution that something doesn't make sense um but secondly if those things evolved all right, how is it that the sun that's bigger than anything else in the in our in our solar system, according to you, right? That's what we were taught was that we have a solar system and it looks exactly like this. Okay, well, how did the sun not pull the earth towards it? How does it not pull Mercury, which is smaller than the sun? I mean, it's smaller than the earth, it's smaller than Venus. Um, it's smaller than Mars, right? It's smaller than everything, except Pluto, which now they're telling us is not a planet. How is it that Mercury doesn't get swallowed? How is it that Venus hasn't gotten swallowed up? Then they say, well, you know, Jupiter pulls the planets away, but Jupiter takes longer to go around the sun. Jupiter, you know, could take years 
Not could. It does. It takes years. Years upon years upon years to go around the sun, which means that Jupiter is not pulling us. If anything, what happens when Jupiter is on the other side of the sun? And if you're saying it's the gravitational pull is, of Jupiter that's pulling us, then what happens when both of them are on one side? Why don't we just all get sucked in? <laughs> right? But this is what they teach. We got a problem. You said the Earth spins at 1,000 miles per hour and 70,000 uh, uh, miles per hour around the sun or whatever. Okay, there you go. Right? So, right, but so, so when we ask questions like this, there's no real answer. The first thing that happens is people just say, oh, you're stupid, you're dumb, you're slow. Oh, you're one of those people. You're a flat earther. You're like Kyrie Irving. They find all these people that they don't like and they try to put you in a box so that you'll feel bad about it. But these are honest questions. Just like they have honest questions, we should be able to answer. Well, okay, fine, let's have honest dialogue. You believe in this and that or whatever. If you only fall into one of six categories. And so far, I've gone five out of six. Right, we started with number six, micro, which is the one that we can say we can agree with, but even though we don't really believe that to be evolution, but then after that, we got to prove the other five. And so far, we got some big issues. Here's number five. Here's the last one that we're going to go over today, right? We started with number six, then we went back to one through four, and we're going to end, end on this one, and then we'll mention micro again just to make sure that we comprehend that we do agree with at least one, right? Then the last one is macro. That's when a species goes from one species to another. Now, number one, we've already had an issue with this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, we got two more. So I got to speed up a little bit. I'm sorry, two more to go. I'm sorry, we didn't go over number four. Number four, we kind of hit already, but number four is organic life, right? Which means that at some point, all these things that are around, that we're not alive, at least from what we're told, hydrogen, um, you know, nitrogen, oxygen, etc., are not alive. Gold, zinc, copper, they're not alive. That's what we're told. So if they're not alive, they're not organic. Somehow, some way, all these elements that existed, we now are supposed to come from that. Life, organic life, supposedly came from that. Okay? So how does organic life come from nothing? Then they say, well, you know, there was a soup that happened upon the earth and there was really, it was like acidic rain. You know, the pH level was terrible. It was acid rain and everything was actually being like, you know, there was no place for life to exist. But somehow out of that, things began to click and come together. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. You can't have acid rain and that's the primordial ooze or the soup or whatever you want to call it. And we live as beings, we have to live in a pH level higher than 7. It's got to be around 7.35, right? And if it's not around 7.35, we can't live. 7.30, anything lower than 7 is acidic. Anything higher than 7 is alkaline. We have to be alkaline in order to live. And if we're over alkaline level in our bodies, we can't even experience things like cancer and other things like that. It's impossible. So the only way that you can experience cancer is you have to be somebody that's not alkaline, right? So if you're talking about everything that life needs to exist was made in the acidic, then how in the world do you live in the alkaline? Right? Like, we got some problems. People get mad when I ask questions, but that's why I ask questions. I got to ask questions because questions are some of the only things that have saved my life and saved my soul and saved me from going down some really dark routes. You know, like, question, if I end up trying to be like these people out here that I know serve um, you know, life sentences or whatever, even if I was a boss for 10 years, is that worth, you know, the rest of my life, natural life being in prison and stuff and having to fight people for the rest of my life and not seeing my children or my family? Yeah, you know what? It's not worth it. I don't think I'm going to go down that road. Well, same thing, same type of thought process here. You want me to believe something that you're telling me is going to take me and say, okay, I don't have to worry about uh, um, law right? It supersedes natural law, which your belief system does, doesn't believe in natural law, doesn't believe in universal law, because if you believe in universal law, you wouldn't even use the word universe the way that you do, let alone all these other things, right? But you want me to believe in something that would take me out of eternity. You want me to believe there is no eternity. You want me to believe that basically this process of the world coming and going, coming and going, the universe blowing up and then shrinking and then blowing up and then shrinking, that's an eternal process, which is nothing more than Eastern philosophy, right? You're talking about... Um, Hindu type philosophy and some type of um, like yoga, yogi or, you know, yogi because yoga is a religion as well. And yoga and Hinduism, if you don't know, go hand in hand. So it's like you're talking about that type of religion, right? Where you're saying, oh, it comes, it goes, it comes, it goes, it comes, it goes for eternity. And, but you have to have faith in it because you've never seen it. 
somebody told you that or somebody said, hey, we can, we'll, we'll back that up with something, you know? Yeah, you have to be inquisitive enough to ask questions, right? So I, I, you, you haven't given me anything yet that shows me anything. So that's the fourth one is organic life. Number one, like you, you, we have no problem. We, we can't deal with that. And then lastly, number five is macro. That's species. That's the species. That means that this species came from this species, which came from this species. We got a couple of problems with this. If I could even just line up the ape stuff real quick. Do you know that for the longest time, now they're trying to say that's not right. We've evolved our thinking. You see how I'm saying? They, they do that. They twist that. We evolved our thinking. We were wrong about this, but we evolved. No, you were just wrong. And now you got to figure out something else to be able to put out to say that you're right. So check this out. Check this out. So when we're talking about um, macro, macro means the species came from a species. First of all, we've been lied to a lot. Um, there was one point in the late 2000s, Time Magazine came up with an article they started putting, they were really pushing this idea of evolution in schools and stuff, like at a level they never had before. And uh, really, we had to know, like, up until the 1950s, 1960s, you didn't teach evolution in schools. So people act like this is like something that has always been in school, and it's only the stupid people that are against it and people that be believe in evolution. Remember, it's only in the 1800s that Darwin wrote his book. That's not that long ago. You know, we're talking 150, 160, 170 years ago. That's not too long ago. That's a hop, skip, and a jump. That's three generations. Right? Depending on what it is. Maybe it's four. Right? But that's, that's, that's basically slavery time. Around the same time. Darwin was not out here writing this stuff a long time. So, they, this is not a... Uh, um, I hope I got my timeline on that. Maybe I could be wrong, maybe not. But this is not that long ago. Even if we want to say 1700s, I feel like 1800s is right. But even if we want to go 1700s, we're not working that hard to find this, right? To find that this is a new philosophy that people are using. Now, Darwinism, people usually focus on it only in the macro and the species, right? But remember, why did Darwin even talk about the, the, the why did he even write his book? Remember the title, The Origin of Species, The Theory of Evolution, The Struggle for Survival, of favored races, which means that he believed that white men had evolved from better animals than black people had, and so therefore white people needed to exist and fight for their survival by making sure that they pressed everybody else down. This is what Darwin spoke on. Macro. That was what he did, right? So we, we, we automatically, if you're bringing up Darwin, you're bringing up stuff that says white people are supposed to be on top. you got to be careful with what you're speaking with, and a lot of people don't know that. That's why we oftentimes tell that to people. But if you're dealing with macro, one of the problems with macro, too, is that you have things that happen, like, organically, um, you know, fourth one, or even macro, the fifth one, that are problematic because they lie to you. They told you that you and chimpanzees were close and this and that or whatever, right? They told you, you and, first it was you and gorillas, right? Then it was you and orangutans. Then it was you and chimpanzees. Then it flipped back to orangutans. No, maybe it's gorillas, right? Problem with, or, um, you know, and maybe it's chimpanzees again. We don't know. Problem is, problem is, right, that if you're talking about these great apes and they're trying to say you're nothing more than the ape, problem with this is, is that they started lying and saying, while they would tell you and admit to you at the same time they were writing these articles that they know less than how 1% of DNA works, at the same time, they were being honest and they were saying, you know what? Even though we only know less than how 1% of DNA works, we'll say that we have 99 point something percent of the DNA of a chimpanzee or an ape. The problem with this is, though, is that they were not being honest with you. It was written in 1859. There you go. So 1800. So we're dealing once again, Civil War, right? Right in the midst of the Civil War, right? Because the Civil War really started in Kansas, um, 1856. And really after that, before that, it was already going. That's why American fought the Revolutionary War, right? That's why they fought the Revolutionary War. But but let's let, let's get back into this real quick because I have to take my leave. I got to get on the on, on the road and get traveling um, very soon, and I mean like within minutes. So we're gonna hit this real quick. All they did when it came to animals, besides what we talked about with Darwinism, all that they did was that they. Um, I'm sorry. Holy Spirit, help me stay focused. <sighs> Back in the late two, um, back you know, right before two thousand in, in the late nineties, Time magazine starts showing pictures of babies and chimps. You can go look this up. These are showing pictures of babies and chimps together and saying, you know, how how they're similar and how they're both young and how the mothers love them and all this stuff, right? 
then you start seeing that um, they start saying, well, we have 99 point whatever percent DNA as chimpanzees. But they lied to you. Because if you look at this, this is real, real simple math. I believe it's um, female eggs of a woman, right? And female eggs, or well, let's do it like this. I don't think it's the eggs. I think it's the X chromosome of a chimpanzee and of a human, of a, of a human um, being. The X chromosome uh, for both species is like 60 something percent the same. And I believe it's, no, 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 yeah, yeah, X chromosome, 60 something percent the same. The Y chromosome is 40 something percent the same, which means that if I've got a 40 something percent um, similar or same chromosome for the, for the male, and I've got a 60 something percent chromosome that's the same for the female, Tell me how in the world that gets us to 99 point something percent same. Did you catch that? Mathematically impossible. Right? Mathematically impossible. I've got an X chromosome, right, that's uh, 60 something percent the same, a Y chromosome that's 40 something percent the same. How do you get 99 point something percent out of that? Right? But by going by that same logic, though, you know that then there's other things that exist. You know, like, for example, bananas share a significant amount of DNA with you. Are you the same as a banana? Did you come from a banana? Now, this is when you start getting the stuff where in your mind you say, you know, hell to the no, <laughs> right? Like, literally, you'd be like, no, this doesn't even make sense. A banana? Well, what about a, a, a sponge in the ocean? Oh, no, you know, I'm, I'm not the same as a sponge. But they would say, hey, if you're going to go up percentages, because we're not going to, somehow, somewhere they said that, 90% comes from 40 and 60. Well, there's actually things with DNA out there that you share 50, 60% with. So why not say that you're the same as that? Why not say you came from that? And some people do, which is why some people will say you come from a frog. Some people say you come from a toad. Some people say you come from a whale. Some people just say, say you come from a porpoise. Some people say that you have all these things because all your DNA. No, no, just like, when do we get to a place to where your book smarts have to be superseded by your street marks, smarts. Or what the most high says, the street smart in this sense, is more important than what somebody's trying to write in a book. They're trying to say the DNA. And by the way, that's one of the most foolish things in the world, right? If I make a car, right? If I make a car, okay? And I, and, or let's say 2,000 years from now, something happens, and, you know, it's one of those Mad Max situations. People don't know where cars come from. They stumble upon cars. And they're like, huh, there's these things with wheels. Maybe this car gave birth to this car, which gave birth to this car. No, like the fact that all of them have wheels, the fact that all of them have engines, the fact that all of them have um, windshields, the fact that all of them have gear shifts, the fact that all of them have battery uh, battery power, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It, the fact that all of them have seats, it means that there was a creator that created the car and the people who made the car just simply made variations of the car, right, which we believe in, and micro, number six. But it doesn't mean that there's this car that came from another car that came from another car but in essence that's what they did to so as to close this out that's what they did with the apes what they did initially is that they lined up all the apes they did this with horses they did this with all types of stuff they just lined up things in order of size or you can line it up in whatever you might line it up in order of the size of the of the cranium you might line it up in the side um as far as the shape of the finger. Darwin did that with the shape of the beak. Hey, this bird has a beak like this, and this bird has a beak that's slightly curved, right? You got a straight beak that's slightly curved, and more curved, and more curved, and more curved, right? And so he said, well, this animal must have came first, and this animal must have came next. Darwin did that too, right? So they did that with apes, and then they said, and then they just put you at the end. That's why you see that diagram, you know, where you got the thing that's, um, you know, on, on walking on all fours and then one that's kind of sort of walking all fours and one is slightly raised and one is slightly raised and one that has the shoulders back then one's head gets more and then one that's a human being right you see that evolutionary th um, thing that you know that famous thing that people use over and over again right somebody based off a theory and somebody drew and somebody showed you as a child and somebody kept on showing you over and over and over again and has showed children now for generations so where more children see that than they see the word of yah right because it's illegal to show that have faith in that then it, but it's not. It's illegal to have faith in the Most High in your schools, right? So, and all that that they did, that's all they did. They lined them up in order. No matter what order you've ever heard of the apes being in, then they put you last. All they did was they found something about the ape that they liked, 
something about the eighth that was part of their theory, and they simply just put it in line. If it was a size, then guess what? That's why you got the orangutan, which leads to the gorilla, which leads to the... Or I'm sorry, it used to be like the the, chim, the, the the chimpanzee, then the orangutan, then the gorilla, and then a human being, right? Because that was size. And they said, well, you know, let's go by smarts. So we figured until they realized chimpanzees are smarter than orangutans or, or just, a, just about as smart, right? But so they, that's why the orangutan used to be what they said we came from. Then at one point, be, now it's the chimpanzee is as smart as we are. Matter of fact, they're the most smart because they have families and stuff like that. Well, so do gorillas and so do orangutans. Right. Well, you know, they commit murder and they eat meat, but they also eat vegetables. Well, what does that mean as far as your stuff? Right. Because you have vegans out there. Gorillas are vegan. they are human beings that are vegans. they are human beings and meat doesn't agree with this system. I mean, so even in your own situation, what you're teaching about evolution, it doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. So the only thing we agree on is number six, micro variations. If people, if animals have sex. You get variations <laughs> that come out of it. Slight variations, but variations nonetheless. Right? So let's leave that there. I must get ready to take my leave. We have cosmic. We have um, with the six types of evolution. You got cosmic. You have chemical, stellar and planetary, organic, macro, micro. Micro is the only one that can be proven. It's the only one that we can say we agree with because, hey, scientific proof. If I have a child, the child will have a different variation right then i do right if if they have a child the child will, will not look exactly like either one of us if, if they have a child the child will not look exactly like either one of us they will share what though especially if we're all male we are well even if we're female well, let's just use all male because that's easier i don't i don't want i want to just well, you know we might revisit this you know we're going to go into some of this stuff more and more through our early rise of bible study but long story short if they're all male we know that they can carry the same, almost the same blood, 99.9999, whatever percent the same blood, right? And keep on passing it down or something very close to that. Um, meanwhile, though, even when they're carrying that same blood, they're going to all look different, right? they are going to all look different. Um, they'll have two arms. They'll have two legs. They'll have a brain. They'll have a heart. They'll have lungs. They're not going to, one's not going to start having a heart. That's going to start, you know, if, if it does evolve, it's always a bad thing. If somebody has an enlarged heart, your, your heart is larger than it's supposed to be. That's not good. <laughs> right? Like if you have a fly that has multiple wings, people will be like, oh man, that fly evolved. That's not good. If a fly has more than, um, the, more than the two wings it's supposed to have, or some have four or whatever, but let's say it's supposed to have two wings. If the fly gets a third wing, it can't fly. Oh man, look at that fish. That fish has three heads. If a fish has three heads, it can't really survive that well. Like it can maybe survive for a little bit if nothing comes to get it, but it's going to be slowed down. And all three heads have to basically like try to somehow connect with the body and make it make it one anyways. Um, but they have issues. If somebody has an extra leg, right? If somebody has an extra leg, it's not something that makes them run faster, is it? All the stuff they're talking about with evolution, it doesn't make sense. Right? The only thing that comes close to making sense is microevolution, but we still got issues. We can agree that there's quote-unquote microevolution, but it's not evolution if just a same species has sex and gives birth to babies, and the babies look slightly different. How do we call it evolution? But you got to call it evolution if you want to make sure that people believe in evolution. And if that's the only one that you got to hang your hat on, at least you can say, well, we know for sure that one's real, so maybe we'll come across evidence for the other five. Keep trying if you want. All right. That being said, thank you so much. Hopefully you learned something, you grew from something, you can have something to study to show yourself approved. And now when you get into conversations with people down the road, you can actually begin to say, OK, you know, now I get what this person is saying. You, this person talking about this and they're, they're talking about chem, chemicals and stuff. OK, chemical evolution. They're talking about, well, what about hydrogen and oxygen, nitrogen? OK, well, time out. Let me go to the stars. Let me ask about the stars. Right. Let me just ask. Now I have the right questions to ask to see where they're at. And to help them to see that they should question what they're talking about. Oh, or they're talking about planets and this. Okay, let's talk about stellar and planetary. And let's talk about gravity. And let's talk about all these different theories that are out there that don't seem to make sense, right? You know, but also, too, be ready to give them an alternative, right? The alternative. We talked about this on the Early Rise of Bible Study. What if the earth came first? What if what the word says is how um, all things were created? What if science backs it up, right? Gas, liquid, solid. What, what if... What you've been taught your whole life, as we talked about last night. What if you have been taught the wrong thing? You know, what if you are the 80-year-old 
See, we were talking about the 80 year old woman that's gone to church her whole life and was just like, I don't know what to do with this information you're giving me because you're forcing me to have to go against something that I've been with my whole entire existence. Right. But what about the 80 year old who was who his whole entire existence or her whole entire existence was taught that faith in, in any type of Elohim or God or nature or whatever and any type of spirit is foolish. And then you introduce to them something as simple as, well, what about the word universe? Or what about the word psychology? What about the word pneuma, pneumatical? Right? Like, so we can be empathetic and have conversation and deal with the fact that we are breaking down some people's lives. Not just some people's belief systems, but some people's lives. Right? But be ready, study, show yourself approved. If you have questions, comments, or concerns, y'all know what to do. Hit us up. Um, we'll have the links. We'll start sending out for Brothers in Black, and it'll be the same link. We'll just share the link. So if you get the link for Brothers in Black, right? That's the link for Hollow's Eve. Matter of fact, I'll probably put like Brothers in Black slash Hollow's Eve or something like that. But if you get the link for one, you have the link for the other, okay? So we'll start sending that out at some point today. Uh, make sure that you have it by 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern, New York time. We'll be back on 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern, New York time this evening. Um, we'll also then um, at 8 o'clock, what is it? 8 o'clock p.m. I'm sorry, 8 o'clock a.m. Eastern New York time tomorrow. And don't forget, we'll have our... Um, the podcast on the Kofi 40 podcast. So we're excited. We're thankful. We're grateful for everything that's going on. We appreciate the King and Queen and each and every one of you. And um, I must take my lead. We want you to be in our prayers that you be hearers of this word, but doers as well. We give all praises to the Most High Yahweh Elohim. Don't forget to follow my wife, the Honorable Maya, who lives a life that's able to be honored. Um, if you're watching this later on, just simply look in the description box with these videos um, as far as where to, how to be able to get in contact with us um, or any other video, any other podcast you can pull up, how to be able to get in contact with us. We appreciate you in advance. Um, and as always, uh, remember, this is Pastor Kofi, a.k.a. The Shadow Ben, one pastor servant of Christ, where we're always changing lives one mind at a time, but being the voice of the voices and speaking the unspoken. And you are loved. You are necessary. You are majestic. You are fearfully and wonderfully made in you, which is all of us working together will be the reason why people who are in this system no longer have to be of it. Shalom, fam. Peace. Oh, and don't forget there's a recording on Facebook as well. Pursue the promises, y'all. Peace. Hashtag finish strong.